Hello. Um, there's lots to talk about with the War Games, episode one. I love this episode of Doctor Who. I love the War Games, and um, uh, it feels really modern. It feels, even though it's set in the 60s, it feels like this could be Doctor Who virtually of any era. Uh, and of course, uh, off quote, it's the first time we're back in contemporary London uh, for any period of time. And not shrunk to the size of ants. Um, oh God, is that still to come? No, we've had the planet of the giants. Um, and and as a result, it does feel like Doctor Who sort of moving into territory that will become its stock in trade uh, for a long, long time to come. Um, we get to meet Ben and Polly. Oh, I love Ben and Polly. I hope they become new companions who are absolutely fabulous uh, and have a vibrancy. We get the we get the scenes set in um, the Cavern Club. Not the Cavern Club, the Inferno, and uh, that that juxtaposition, especially when the Doctor shows up, of that being in Doctor Who is just a fabulous thing. It's really got an energy uh, and a sort of ridiculous sense of ridiculousness about it. I love that kind of thing. I love all the stuff set in the BT Tower. I love Wotan and the way he takes over people. In fact, this is uh, a pretty consistently ace episode of Doctor Who. However. Upon watching this episode or two, something was dawning on me, uh, and it involves the Doctor. Now, I know that one of the glories of Doctor Who is the fact that it can be different week upon week. It can it can be in contemporary London, it can be in space, it can be historical, and that's one of the things we love about it. But there's been something about the last few stories where it has felt as if everything has been uh, really different. Uh, everything seems incredibly juxtaposed, and... I've not really been able to put a finger on why, and I'm thinking back, so we've had uh, Dark's Master Plan, um, The Massacre, and then we had uh, The Ark, uh, The Gunfighters, The Savages, and for some reason, uh, the differences between these stories seemed a lot more vast than when you get to, when, you know, earlier on in, in, you know, so we had Unearthed Child of the Daleks, and Destruction Marco Polo. That felt a bit more um, linked, interlinked. And I've put my finger on it. Why? And it's because of Hartnell. It's because of the Doctor. Hartnell's becoming less and less and less of a presence. Okay, you grasp onto things that the Doctor does at the moment uh, with absolute delight. So uh, when he says, "Oh, Fab Gear," or whatever he says, and that put in the out of order sign on the TARDIS, uh, and various little moments, various little bits of dialogue, but. For the vast majority of this episode, the Doctor's an observer, watching things going on, reacting to stuff. He's not making stuff happen very much at all. And I wonder whether this increased detachment of the character of the Doctor from the programme, Doctor Who, has resulted in that lack of continuity running from story to story. If you get to Matt Smith, and, and Matt Smith is such a big, vibrant character who fills up the screen, it doesn't matter where you put him, because it's always going to be Doctor Who. Whereas at the moment, because Hartnell is becoming increasingly marginalised in his own program because of his own illness and perhaps because of the tensions behind the scenes, it just feels as if every story is so completely different. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the War Games. I think this is a brilliant, brilliant episode of Doctor Who, and I really can't wait for the next one. And uh, and it's great to be in contemporary London. I'm just having a good time. But it's really weird how it's taken um, the first archetypal... Um, story set in contemporary and that, that whole thing that Doctor Who is going to become synonymous with to make me recognise that it's been this lack of the Doctor who which has made things seem really weird now okay this has been very long so as a special treat to anybody who's made it this far this computer sat on a revolving chair so I'll now spin it round for a laugh there we go <laughs> hey okay see you next time bye <laughs>